series. Today we'll be taking a look at the carnivore butterfly, also scientifically known as the Plebeia semilans. The habitat of this butterfly is in the United States, primarily in the states of Wisconsin, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, New Hampshire, New York, Ohio, and possibly Illinois. Minnesota's only surviving occurrence of the carnivore blue butterfly is in the mosaic of oak, savanna, and San Bernas habitats in the southeast, where wild blue lupin is common. The exuberant colony was concentrated along an unpaved township road through an overgrown sand savanna. Although wild blue lupin plants could still be found in the overgrown savanna away from the road, the butterfly still utilized a primarily small location and population of vigorous plants along the road edges. Similar habits are reported for Wisconsin and Michigan. Cardinal blue caterpillars can only feed on the leaves of wild lupin plants, so this severely restricts them of where they can survive. Let's talk about some of the unique features of these butterflies. The Carnum blue butterfly is a typical member of the subfamily of the Lycinidae, commonly known as blues, because of the blue coloration of their upper wing surfaces in males. Females usually have more brown than blue. It is a small butterfly with a four-wing length of around 1.2 to 1.5 centimeters from base to apex, with rounded wings. Males and females are nearly identical in size and shape. The dorsal surfaces of both hind and forewings of males are bright, violet, or lilac tinted blue with slight frosting of wider scalars in fresh individuals, especially along the veins. There is a thin black line along the outer edges of the wings and a contrasting fringe of long white scales. The thorax above is clothed in a dense pile of blue hair-like scales. The female is mostly dark brown above, with blue scaling confined to the basal area of the wings. There is a row of circular black spots near the outer margin of the hindwing that is capped on their inner sides with bright orange crescents. Beneath, the genders are nearly identical, with a sparse pattern of white ringed black spots on the pale grey ground, sometimes darker grey in females. Near the outer margin of the hindwing, there is a band of prominent bright orange crescents, each enfolding a silver-like blue eye and thinly capped on the inner edge with black. Smaller orange spots without the silver details continue along the band along the forewing. Now let's discuss some of the survival features of the carnivore blue butterflies. These butterflies have two generations each year through its range, including Minnesota. Eggs are laid by the second generation females over winter and hatch in early spring. Although the eggs are laid on various plant surfaces near the basis of wild blue lupin plants, the tiny hatchlings have to find their way to lupin shoots emerging from the soil. The first generation's adults can begin to appear in mid-May and are mostly gone by late June. Year-to-year -year variation in the rate of warm up can advance or decline the flight period. Females of the first generation to lay their eggs are on lupin stems and leaves. Second generation adults emerge and fly beginning around as early as mid-July and are continuing into late August. Adults' life expectancy in the wild is estimated to only be around a few days. There is no information on how many eggs a female can lay over her lifetime. Now let's talk about the endangerment status of carnivore blue butterflies. This butterfly was federally listed as an endangered species in 1992. The habitat of the carnivore blue butterfly had been lost due to a result of land development and natural disturbance, such as wildfires and gazing of large animals. Additionally, researchers are starting the carnivore blue butterflies to find the best way to manage the butterfly and its habitat. Where possible, the butterfly's habitat is being managed and protected. Other kinds of animals and plants will also benefit from the protection of the butterfly's habitat. Additionally, the carnivore blue butterfly's rarity and beauty makes it a desirable addition to butterfly collections. Because butterfly numbers are so low, the collection of even a few individuals could harm the butterfly population. However, there is work being done to prevent these butterflies from going extinct. For example, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services prepared a recovery plan that describes and prioritized actions to conserve and restore the species. Wisconsin has implemented a statewide habitat conversion plan that prevents human activities such as roadside maintenance and timber harvest in areas that support carnivores, but ensures that the activities are conducted in ways that conserves and protects the species and its habitat. Also, zoos are purgating carnivore blues, and instead of having these butterflies being released in suitable habitats in Ohio, Indiana, and New Hampshire, so they can start new populations in areas where this butterfly has been made extinct. Thank you guys so much for joining us in episode 6 of Animal Anthem. We hope to see you in our next video.